have been gathering for several months and heard from many colleagues, friends and admirers, who some of whom are here, but many of whom couldn't be here today and wanted to express that. They're bound for you in a nice binder with gold print that says Robert Bloom, the first 80 years. <laughs> Chicago Symphony and a former student of yours. And he writes in a memoir, I had been studying in Los Angeles, took up the oboe at the age of 16. When I first heard you on the broadcast from the Toscanini NBC series, it was a great revelation as to how the oboe could sound, soaring above the orchestra with a magnificent tone. <laughs> After being away from music for five years during World War II, I decided to go to New York and go to the Juilliard under the GI Bill. I also played in the National Orchestra Association under Barzan, and while playing a concert at Carnegie, my old Kabar oboe was stolen during the break between rehearsal and concert. My friend Sam Barron heard about my flight, and he asked his friend, Robert Bloom, if he would select an instrument for me. I was almost overcome with awe and gratitude when you tried several Luray oboes for me and selected a good one and offered to give me lessons. I feel that you were by far my most influential teacher and stimulated my growth with your great sound and singing quality to try to communicate on the instrument as you always did. When I auditioned for William Steinberg at your recommendation for a job as first oboe in Buffalo, I was accepted by Steinberg. You also recommended me to Fritz Reiner for the Chicago Symphony, and it was well known that Reiner really wanted you. <laughs> I became the assistant first in 1953 and first oboe in 1954. Without those lessons graciously given to you, by me, given to me by you, I doubt if I could have succeeded these last 35 years as first of all in Chicago. I might never have had the chance. You're a great artist and a great man. Sincerely, Ray Still. How fortunate I was to have heard your warm, rich, vibrant sound in my ears from 1938 when I began to play the oboe through many more of the important oboistically formative years. Plus, your constantly singing, soaring line and poetic imagination. In New York City colloquial, I should only be around to congratulate you on your 100th birthday. <laughs> Buona fortuna. As if that isn't all enough, a t-shirt. He can be the head rooster now. Uh, this was sent to him by his friends at Hadex in Venice, Florida.
at Yale, the first time somebody addressed me as professor, I looked around to see who they were talking to. I feel the same way tonight. Is it really me? Is there a mistake somewhere? Because this is too much, really. And it's been a long concert. And what you must realize, that when this concert started, I was only 50 years old. <laughs> serious because when I do I'll start crying and I don't want to do that. So well, God bless you all and thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll see a lot of you later. Now